today uh, we're going to discuss uh, you've already seen this video i'm not going to uh, go through all the uh, contents of this but we will have a more interactive session here today's discussion is web presence for faculty so what is uh, web presence like what are the things you want people around you to know about you or your work okay so that was the topic and in the videos you have seen on WordPress. So, uh, you have possibly created a, a sample site by now. What I am going to give you is a small task. This is an instruction for the coordinators, uh, remote center coordinators, please uh, make your uh, uh, faculty sit in pairs and I am going to give a small assignment and from there uh, we will take maybe about uh, 10 minutes for you to uh, carry on their uh, small assignment and then we will take on uh, discussion and questions and interaction from there okay so what you have to do now is to sit in pairs so faculty please uh, sit with somebody who is uh, next to you so that you can interact with them but what you have to do is on a piece of paper individually although you are sitting in pairs individually you write answers to the following two questions. The first question is by wanting to put yourself on the web, we start from the question who is your audience? Okay, this is very important. Although what you have learnt in all this course is how to create a website, but that was just more of a getting used to a skill to create website. But uh, in a holistic way, we need to answer as faculty what are we interested in putting out in the web. So, let us start from there first and then we will use the tools. It is like learning letters of the alphabet. Okay? Now, you are actually going to create a, a novel or a poem or something beautiful. So, what you have learned so far is just the letters of the alphabet which is basically the tools. Let us uh, now answer the question. So, please write down individually in a piece of paper who is the target audience of your website, whom you want to read or whom you think are most likely to come and read and whom you want to convey the information. So, it could be your own students, students from other institutes or uh, industry or uh, uh, DST or other uh, faculty from other universities who might want to know what areas you are working on so that they can have some interaction. So, you decide mainly one or two main groups of audience because there will be something for everybody to consume. Let us leave that alone first. First, we need to be sure who is this 70 or 80 percent of those people who is going to hit your website. So, please write down on a piece of paper who is this dominant set of group or the audience that is going to visit your website. Question number one. Question number two and what is the information they are seeking. So, whenever we are developing a website, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of the audience. So, what is it they seek? Who are they? So, let us take about 5 minutes now and individually please write down in a piece of paper what you think in your opinion for your personal website. Do not write an answer which is for uh, uh, all the faculty in your department or your institute or so on. So, let us leave that. Let us just concentrate on you, your work and about you. Written down the answers to these two questions. What you have to do next is to discuss with your partner why you think uh, the answer is uh, correct for yourself. Why do you think uh, say let us say if you had written own students, why do you think own students form the 70 percent of the audience and just uh, discuss with your partner and try to share your opinion with your partner and see if you can uh, clear up your thoughts of uh, maybe you have missed out who the dominant uh, audience is, maybe your partner has got it uh, differently. So, have a small discussion and come to a consensus of who do you think among each pair, who do you think would be a dominant group of audience and what information they are seeking. So, first you do it individually, second you are going to do with pairs and then the remote center coordinator please get each of these pairs, one from each of these pairs to uh, discuss among yourself in that classroom as to why you think a particular set of audience is the dominant group. After that, we will take questions and share your screens uh, across the country. So, I hope you are uh, discussing among pairs and then remote center coordinators please ask uh, one among each pair to share it with the entire classroom of why they think 
the particular audience is most important and why they think the particular information they seek is the most important and how often they are seeking that information. Now you should be sharing with everybody in the classroom and then evolve to any one or two most important points that comes in the discussion in the classroom. So once you have consensus answer for these two questions, so you can raise your hands on the computer and then we will uh, connect you to the entire country and then you can share your views. This is uh, Dr. Mahalingam College of Engineering. Sir, we have a major audience as our students your attending students? our course. Your yes, own my own students. Attending, uh, attending your own course. My okay. class. Okay, your class. Yes, sir. Fine. And they are friends attending the same course in a different classroom. Okay, fine. Second audience, my friends having the same domain. Okay, within your college or uh, in other uh, colleges as well? Both, sir. Okay, all right. Third is my research group. Okay, I think we will uh, yes. stop there. That much is enough. Sir. Now, you have identified your own students, number one, your peer, yes. people working in similar areas yes. and your own research. Let us quickly tell for the second group. I do not want the first group because first group is going to be uh, more course oriented and for them I think it will be like Moodle kind of thing will be more appropriate. So, yes. let us leave out the first group, okay. own students, own class students. Okay. I think what you, you would like to give them is a link to the Moodle course okay, where you have more learning material. Yes, sir. So, let us uh, leave group yes. and come to the second group. Uh, peers working in your college as well as in other parts of the country. So, what is the information they seek from your website or what would you seek from your peers in across the country? We will go to a university BDT College of Engineering. Hello. Uh, good uh, noon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, in our group we decided again like the previous center students are going to be our uh, first focus. Okay, your own students? Our own students are the first audience. Okay. And then faculty members, that is peers. Uh, as I said before, let the first audience, which is your own core students, what is the kind of information they seek? Information they seek is subject notes and then any PowerPoints if we have prepared and then short questions and multiple choice questions if we prepare for the subject. Okay. Here I would like to reiterate the point again. Now, with our own course student, uh, if it is a learning material, okay, if it is as you said PowerPoint presentation, lecture notes, uh, questions and so on, it is better to give that information in a learning management system such as Moodle. So, let us keep that aside for the moment. Uh, let us look at the second group. For the first group, I understand that will be the most important audience, but for that group what you should be doing? is to only provide a link to the Moodle course. Okay, It is only link. This are the courses I am teaching now. This is the link to the Moodle course. This much is enough for your dominant audience that is sufficient. But let us go to the second group which is the faculty. So, what kind of information you think the faculty will be uh, seeking from your web page? Faculty will be our specialization areas, okay. research areas yeah. and our publications yes. possibly. Okay and uh, the various courses we handle and right. if you have prepared any study material or anything in, in those subjects and oh. uh, research area, if you have any uh, equipments or anything, to infrastructure facility if we have. Okay, very good. So, these things can be shared with them. Okay, very good. So, uh, that is uh, very clear. You have got your research areas, you have got your uh, publications and any equipment that you want to share that other people can use. Also, one more thing you must consider is uh, people, the faculty who are seeking your website may want to look you up to see if you can be their examiner in their uh, student's thesis. Okay? That is another thing that faculty seek from other faculty throughout the country. Okay? So, you need to keep this couple of aspects in mind. Thank you very much uh, BDT College. Let us move on to the next college and we will take a couple of more. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, Sardaya College. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Very good. So, uh, so we represent Sardaya College of Engineering, yes. Kerala. Okay. Uh, which so where, our, where is it in our Kerala? Our primary Trishore district Trishur, in Kerala. Okay. okay, very good. Trishore. Yeah, yeah. You know Guruvayur. Yes, yes, Guru yes. Yes, go so ahead. So, our yes. primary target is students community. Primarily, our own students and okay. secondarily, students 
attending similar courses in the nearby colleges i can't see who is speaking can you raise your hands i will stand myself ah okay there you are okay thank you very much so our primary target our own students and the secondary students undergoing similar courses in the nearby colleges or elsewhere and the secondary targets are so peer which, faculty which level members. students are they they you are, you are targeting at the engineering level or the school level nearing graduate and the post graduate level okay graduate and post graduate it, you need to be very specific because if you are targeting a school student who wants to come to your college then the kind of information you want to put is going to be different so it's always good to be very clear which category of student so you are saying that it is uh, uh, graduate students or post graduate okay then yes that's right and the secondary target is our peer faculty members from our own college or from colleges elsewhere okay doing so, the similar subjects okay what kind of information you think are the peers going to seek from your website they may be interested course material maybe videos our okay. research publications or similar uh, works okay so uh, it's uh, uh, predominantly clear that most of us want our own students first and then we want a uh, peers so whenever we begin to design a website most of us get carried away by the visual design visual design is important i don't deny that but more than that you have to first understand who your target audience is most of us have uh, very clearly evolved to this that it is going to be our own students one then students in uh, other institutes and secondly faculty or other peers working maybe in research institutions or in uh, teaching colleges working in areas similar to yours now that you have uh, kept that in mind you have to gather material what you want to present to the audience the process of what we went through now is to understand the user so we are going to write what is known as a user story first we write what is known as a user story what does the user want so i am going to uh, show you Uh, a template of how to write a user story and once you write the user story your goal is clear so once you write a user story now the goal is clear you know where to go now how to go you learnt one of the tools which is wordpress so it is always so the main objective of what was given in the video lectures was to equip you with one of the tools okay so it is like giving you a car now we gave you a car but we didn't tell you which road to take now i'm telling you i've given you or you have identified yourself your destination your destination is your target user group so always we start with the target user group identify what they require collect that kind of information and then use the tool to construct it or in the analogy you have decided that you want to go to the particular place you know that you have to take this particular route you have been given a car and you drive by that particular route i'm going to give you one small template which can be used to create this user story so this is a user story template so all you need to do is to write a couple of lines of this as a dash okay so dash is the user in your case as a so you write as though you are the user now you put yourself in the shoes of the user which is in your case your own student okay now as a student of this particular course i want what information so that i can achieve a particular goal so the user has a goal yeah so the user you fill in the blank so you are the user as a user i want a particular information so that i can achieve a particular goal so you would write for example let us say that so i have written two examples here the first is as a course student i want to know the learning materials what is the information particular information so that i can revise what was taught in the class okay now although for this particular user i would advise you to go to moodle but you could start with your web page and put a link to the moodle web page but more importantly let us look at the peers in the country so in the peers in the country what do they require or what you as a peer in a particular area would be looking at so as a faculty member working in say which area as power electronics i am working in power, power electronics i want to know other faculty working in this area so that i can arrange them 
to examine my students thesis okay so this is my goal i am looking for examination examiners for my students thesis that is my goal what i want to know i want to know people who are working in power electronics who am i i am a faculty member so each of you need to first construct two or three such user stories so once you have constructed these user stories then you can go and collect uh, information and then then use the tools which have uh, which we have suggested wordpress is one of them you could use other things if you are little more uh, savvy with the web you could use more complicated things for example drupal or joomla and so on okay so let us take 5 uh, minutes or 10 minutes and come up with a couple of such user stories by which you are going to collect information and keep it ready so let's take that play remote center coordinates please ask your colleagues to construct such user stories so other than these two examples so you can construct your own user stories although this is most common let us uh, construct a couple of more user stories and then i will reset the hand raise don't raise your hands now uh, we'll do the hand raise uh, after some time so we'll have marathwada institute of uh, technology good afternoon marathwada sir uh, myself sarab kohli Uh, hi sir uh, sir as a industry person i want to know the academic schedule of the department and the contact so that i can schedule a visit to the department by contacting the concerned department that is my first example okay. and the second is as a faculty person i want to know the content of the course being taught in your area for the same subject so that i can evaluate and modify the content being taught by me for the betterment of students in terms of getting the unified learning across the country okay very good so that's a uh, two good points thank you very much we'll just take couple of more laudresh uh, matha uh, good morning sir we are from lud mata college of science and technology kerala uh, where is it in kerala trivandrum okay trivandrum okay very good as a faculty i want to know the expertise of other faculty so that i can arrange technical talks or training for students or fdp for faculty uh, we have two more that is as a teacher i want to include ict in my teaching so that learning material can be effectively communicated as an as prem preparing for examinations i want concise materials and practice problems so that i can prepare well okay Thank very you. good so you got uh, one more additional thing here apart from the faculty and what is the first thing you said a faculty then a teacher only said so faculty as a teacher so as the a, as, as a, as a as student as preparing for examination i want to know some practice problems okay very good so you want to share the problems that you have uh, created with uh, other students very good thank you very much uh, lordes mata uh, hi kj somaya good afternoon good afternoon professor fatak hello sir yeah yeah please go ahead uh, let let us sh share your uh, user stories Uh, hello sir yeah we can uh, hear my you. user story is as a faculty from iit i want to know more about upcoming government projects uh, to uh, mm. your i mean uh, they, this is the information so that i can give this information to my students to think about their uh, final year projects i would uh, like madam, to this is a small um, clarification i want you are writing yes, sir? you are going to write this information not as yourself okay you have to write uh -huh. this user story as an audience of your website okay, okay. you have currently uh, written have as though you want information to give to your students that's not what okay okay you have to write it from the audience perspective maybe my students are asking for the details from the government exactly. uh, about their upcoming projects so that they can implement their uh, uh, i mean their uh, competencies and knowledge to uh, develop those projects uh, as an uh, you know uh, yes. that uh, third year projects or something yeah. academic so you projects. just rephrase so. it as a okay. student i want student. to know the uh, current uh, government projects or the thrust areas in the government yes. so that i can pick up a project on that lines or something yes okay. yes sir of so course. you are the student is the student is the user you are not the user you are going to be the information provider not the okay. user okay okay so once you okay. put yourself in the shoes of the user then you design that okay these are the uh, content i am going to put up thank you sir thank you fatak you want to add something 
So thank you very much. I'm delighted to be amongst uh, so many participants physically. Uh, when they finish this session, I'll spend five minutes with them. I wanted to just mention two things. First of all, whenever you create content, this question was raised in the morning session about plagiarism and other things. So one thing I would like all participants to note that we very carefully avoid using any IPR protected material. So whenever somebody creates an IPR, we actually get it written uh, explicitly by them saying that they do not mind releasing this under Creative Commons license. All the other videos that we use are from YouTube, where YouTube very clearly states that these videos assets are available in Creative Commons. Secondly, whatever material we create as a combined effort, joint effort, individual efforts by all faculty members, all of us are committed to release everything that we do in public domain so that larger community, including our own colleague teachers, can benefit. Uh, of course, we must avoid plagiarism of any kind, even by remotest implication. So please do not use in your website any material, any chart, any image, any photograph, any uh, graph, which is taken with good intention, but taken from any existing uh, resource which is IPR protected. So all books, etc. are IPR protected. I would like to take a few more seconds to tell you to the extent that some of our colleagues have gone. When Professor Gaitonde was teaching the course on thermodynamics, he wanted to make available steam tables. He found out a steam table in public domain which was published by NIST, United States. But the wording did not very clearly state, a, state the license under which it was available. It only said it is available in public domain. So he actually entered into an email correspondence with them and only when they specifically stated that this is available in open source, then he used that steam table in his course. So this is the precaution that we need to take both to respect somebody else's IPR and to ensure that our learners, including all of us, get access to the IPR that we create ourselves. Uh, second thing about the government project, that question was asked from here itself. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell all our uh, participating teachers, many of you will remember the national hackathon which was conducted last year at the initiative of AICT Chairman Dr. Sahasrabuddhe and Honorable uh, Minister uh, Mr. Javdekar. More than 40,000 young college students across the country participated in solving more than 500 problems which were posted by various government departments. Out of these 40,000 students, some 10,000 were shortlisted to participate in the final hackathon which was conducted for 36 continuous hours. I know this because I happen to be the chief jury. We had jury committees in 22 different cities. Now this year, AICT is planning to conduct this on still a larger scale. So of course, the question was in the context of finally a project that students would be doing. But I would like to suggest that such hackathons also provide a great opportunity for our students to participate, particularly in some kind of a multidisciplinary fashion to solve real life problems. Of course, the complete solutions won't come from such uh, efforts, but pointers come many startup ideas come and a whole lot of good is achieved in terms of actual learning. So I would suggest that all 7,000 participants of this program should look forward to an announcement by the Ministry and AICT for such an hackathon. And they should encourage their own students and other students from the neighboring institutions to join hands in teams. There is a peculiar requirement that every team must have a minimum of three girl students. One. That's all I would like to say. Uh, as I mentioned, I will be discreetly descending upon some of the remote centers, both during the formal interaction like this and also otherwise. And I look forward to meeting some people at least in person. Thank you so, uh, so much. Over to you. Thank you very much. So let's continue with uh, a couple of more and then we will uh, open it for uh, discussions. Goa College, Farmer Goody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. Very uh, good afternoon. From uh, user story prepared, user story prepared. Yes, as an industrial engineer of ABCD Institute, I want to know the innovative projects carried out by students so that I can apply the student innovation 
in the industry and another user story uh, madam as a faculty a small correction. working in so when you said as an industry engineer of what particular thing you said of some institute ah, like no, you i'm don't... coming from some industry maybe of make ah no so you don't need to be so specific there because it's not a one to one correspondence it's one to many so you uh, try to look at a generic set of users the second point i want to mention is you wanted to know the students vision so that was not very clear so what is the kind of specific no, no, information that vision, you see no no not students vision sorry it is the students innovation projects that they are carrying out okay. which i can apply in industry okay so you want to know what are the a uh, new and innovative projects the students are uh, carrying out so that one you can apply it and two you can uh, probably hire that student uh, in your own uh, company so yeah, given this right. so let's let us just discuss a little bit on this so given these two what is the information that you as a teacher or a faculty member or a department head would like to provide so because this is more generic for your department let's say you are the head of the department and you want to there are industry people who are uh, looking at uh, the projects that have been done in your institute and you want to provide that information uh, let us take this and discuss a little more what is the kind of information that you want to provide about the project so that it is first of all visible to the industry easily accessible and they can translate it into some useful product so what is the kind of information that you would like to put in response to such a requirement so uh, i would put the current problem at hand like sir prof, uh, sir initially mentioned some e governance projects which would initially lead to student ideas maybe a hackathon and then would give rise to some startups or some output from the students which eventually i could take up the ideas and start up something so it would lead to a startup or maybe a solution to a problem at hand you need to be little more specific because see now you have written the story from the audience perspective now you come back to your own uh, shoes let's say this is a, a requirement which is uh, something that the it's a department wide thing right so let's say you are the head of the department and as a head of the department what kind of information that you would put on your website so that this requirement from the industry is addressed so you need to organize the material in that form so it could be something like the title of the projects and a brief abstract of the project title of the project abstract and who has done yeah. it okay yeah who are the guys who is taking up the project or nice pictures from the this one now you have we have come to little more specific things now let's say i was about to come to this second thing so once the user story is ready now the second action is to organize the information that we have at hand and put it in a way that is easily accessible to the audience so in this let us take this case and uh, discuss a little further let us say we want the industry to read about the project so that they can hire the students number 1 so that they can uh, use the product for Uh, converting into some useful products in the market so which means you have to provide first of all say some nice pictorial representation of the product then now what you have to do is construct an excel table so let us let i'm going to uh, go and share okay so let's take this particular example so it's always easier to because we are all uh, familiar with spreadsheets now once you have written all the user stories now from your side you gather the information you don't uh, readily go and put it up on the website okay that that process is just a purely uh, mechanical process okay you can ask your students to do or you can ask somebody else to do it you can do it yourself but that is purely mechanical what is more important is to first understand the requirement which is what we have done now user stories then organize the information from your side so organize the information and then go and construct the table so right away it's not advisable to go and start the uh, website and put all such information so that will lead to a very badly designed website so we need to be clear of whom we want to target we organize the information and then sit together and put it in a nice way okay so how do we organize the information the easiest thing to do is to construct a spreadsheet we are all familiar with spreadsheet so let us 
first decide on the column header. So, these are all the column headers. Okay. So, I am going to mark it. So, let us say the information sort is let us say this is the story I am slightly I have rewritten what she has just said. As an entrepreneur I want to know new innovations so that I can convert them into marketable products. So, now the user story is ready. Now, we go and collect the information. So, if this entrepreneur wants to know new innovations basically they are going to come from either your student project. So, we want to list. So, let us say some of the words would be say title and then say keywords abstract okay, and some image then use case. So, suppose you organize all your as a head of department you organize such information okay, that are coming out from your uh, students projects. Let us organize this information. So, you will just first collect the information it is easier to first collect it in a spreadsheet. So, that your thoughts are clear okay, these are the things that I want to put. Now, usually the why I said keywords or abstract is important is because when a person when the entrepreneur comes and reads that they need to be clear if that is what is their domain of interest that they want to convert it into a useful product. If you and images are very important. So, conceptual images that okay, this particular uh, this is how the student has conceived it that can be marketed. So, let us you can first gather information like this. So, once you have gathered this kind of information at this level you can play around with the column titles you can change it to a different thing you can include more or remove something. So, once you have constructed this entire table then we go on to decide and put it in a appropriate way in the website. We have seen various cases starting from our own students who require our own close material for that as I had advised before let us use Moodle learning learning management is a separate uh, task. So, we can keep that separately after that we looked at faculty peers who would like to know the area that you work your publications all right and your contact. So, if you have to be contacted for say examiner of a thesis or inviting you for a talk. So, all that means that you need to be contactable you need to give a clear email address and a phone number or the department phone number extension. So, these are the things that you first organize as an information kept as a spreadsheet. So, once this is clear then you can go on uh, updating your website. Again the beautification of the website how to put where to put is also an art, but I would like personally to concentrate on the content this content who is the target user what information they require the user story and the organizing how to organize the information that is your expertise. This nobody else can provide other than you, but constructing to a website you can outsource them to somebody else some student might be interested in IT or there might be some local company who is doing this all that you can do once they have done the basic information you know how to play around with WordPress you go and change it. I am not discouraging you not to do the website no definitely not if you are interested please spend some time, but do not spend lot of time in creating website. You have to own the information that is this you have to decide the user story you have to come up with the organizing information. So, once this is clear these both the target and the information is the target which is the goal destination is clear and the way how to achieve the destination is given somebody else can do this for you all as well. If you know it it is good, but these two are the most essential things that you have to know. So, I will stop there there is about 10 more minutes. So, we can uh, have next 10 minutes for uh, free rounds of question and interaction. So, I am going to reset uh, hand raises now and we can take questions for the next 10 minutes. Okay. KIT College Kolhapur. Hello, uh, very good afternoon sir. Uh, sir, 
we are planning for launching mooc at our institute okay so we need some suggestion regarding this we can uh, take this up in a uh, different uh, uh, forum at the moment let's restrict to what this is. i'll just since you asked and let me quickly answer so you can uh, if it's only for your own institute if it's a small college you could try one of this platforms which are already available like uh, open edx okay or you could use um, uh, google's classroom or ma many of the uh, softwares are available oh. or you could work with the okay, uh, mhrd swayam platform but it, it okay, takes sir. a good amount of uh, resources and manpower so you need to be ready to do that it's better you join with uh, other colleges and uh, do it together uh, regarding this session just now we had a discussion that we are already having moodle and yes. plus website yes. so better to connect moodle link in our website yes. for so, providing yeah. source resources to our students yeah so uh, the way you want to do moodle is moodle is mainly for your own course students who will have only if they yes. log in they will be able to see so that is really not a public information now when we call talk about website mm -hmm. that becomes a public information that anybody with an internet access can access without any requirement to log in and view the information that way you need to separate out the audience that people who want to seek information yes. even without logging in like we saw several things like industry mm -hmm. other faculty members or uh, uh, other students in other institutes and so on so these are the things that people can do without logging into website but that could also be your own students for them you just give a link to the moodle so let us say you are taking a course uh, what is the course you are taking uh, computers networking okay networking so what uh, under computer science so you let's say you are taking networking this semester you just give a link to the networking moodle course on your website just the link so your students can quickly come to that link even okay. if they forgot the moodle link they can come to your website go from this link to that link and there they log in and go so that okay. is only for people who have user login but the information that you want to put in a public site you need to separate out and uh, make it accessible to all okay thank you very much amrita kollam hello sir first of all thank you for providing this opportunity opportunity to learn mumbai iit this open course and as well as thank you for uh, providing the course by devak patak sir it's so inspiring when we hear his classes and uh, specifically we have been using all the multimedia and powerpoint presentations and uh, we are yet to provide some more in depth study as well as in depth classes for the students uh, basically on this web production as well as video production etc so we would like to have an in depth study on these topics what do you mean by web protection it's not web protection ah. web production oh it's a web, web page production, production etc okay okay so uh, basically uh, i also had a doubt uh, about the spreadsheet you are explaining yeah uh, towards the last you had the user case yes. i would like to know uh, more about that Could use you please case. explain what that what i mean use cases in in if it's an uh, innovative product which area it can be used so when you see uh, for example uh, from a entrepreneur's uh, point of view they will look at okay uh, is it can it can be used in a remote uh, healthcare center or it can be used in a particular uh, school so if you explicitly write it in a language uh, which is accessible to any person in this particular case it is not a uh, faculty peer who might understand the topic very well so when you want to write a use case means how it can be used where it can be used so that kind of information if you provide that is more useful to a entrepreneur or person who is not familiar in your area he might just come or he or she might just come talk to you and then convert it into a useful product but for them the details of abstract or what method you used or what simulation tool you used what mathematical model you used all that thing does not worry them okay what worries them is how do you use it okay so that is what they will be seeking so if you write the use case the typical case 
in which a particular uh, product can be used, they would come and seek. So, you write, you organize the uh, sheet providing this information first. Okay, so since I am a language teacher, yeah, I basically uh, teach Sanskrit. Okay. So, how can I translate this use case in my specific case? No, no, no. There are a few English teachers yeah. here as well as. That is okay. So, I mean, in this particular case, we are talking about some innovative products. Now, let us say your student, you worked with a student and you came up with some interesting uh, translation tool which translates from, say, English to Sanskrit or something. You are okay. going to, when you say use case, where would you possibly use such a translation tool or some other? application where it can be used. So, in this particular case, I am not saying all the things will have this particular uh, template table. This template table is for the particular user story. So, if I am going to project it. Okay. So, this particular table is only for this particular user story. It is not for all the user story that this same set of uh, column headers were going to come. So, depending on the user yes, story, sir, yes, sir. you are arranging topics or the title of this column for this particular user. So, user, if you have a different user. set of user, you will have a different table and different column headings. That is all I meant. Okay. okay. Thank you very Thanks, much. Sir. I think Thank we you, are uh, running out of time. I can take uh, one more uh, university. Sri Dutta is in Hyderabad. Myself is Srikant from EC department uh, and on behalf of uh, all of this of our college, sir, uh, we have certain uh, questions, sir. Like, uh, say, every faculty wanted to create uh, their own uh, lecture classes, uh, they want to create a website based on their lecture classes and all. And uh, can they really link up to the college website, sir? Thank you for asking this yes, question. It is an important thing. What we have told is how yes, individual sir. faculty will have their own websites. Now, if you want to yes, integrate yes, with other things in your college, the best thing would, would be to uh, decide on a same template. So, all the faculty should have a same template. Each must not have different color, different design. That is the first thing you have to decide. So, you decide on a particular template and share the same template with all the faculty. That is number one. And then all of them put similar kind of uh, structured information. Once you have done this, then you can put the links to each of them in the main department website. So, this is the simplest thing that you can do, but the better way to approach this is to use uh, other content management systems, not WordPress. WordPress does not allow you to go beyond individual pages and blogs. WordPress is meant for that. If you want to do department wide or your college wide uh, this one, uh, a better uh, system is uh, Drupal. So, in Drupal you can actually create this templates and uh, each of the faculty can put their own content there. So, that time it will look uniform and management is easy, whereas in WordPress it is mainly designed for individual uh, sites. Okay. Thank you sir. We have one more question from other faculties. How IIT Mumbai is bringing a new invention in different software like Oracle, SAP, Etc. Yeah, we are not bringing any innovation in uh, any of those software because they are all proprietary software. We cannot contribute anything there. We might be just using them in uh, different applications, but uh, as such, uh, we are not contributing to the development of the software for the proprietary software. But definitely, with open source software, we have been contributing in various uh, projects in engineering software, in uh, Moodle, in uh, Drupal or in other uh, applications. So, it is uh, mainly in the engineering software which are open source, uh, there is some development that is happening. Uh, Amrita Kollam, you have something to ask? The assignment in the, uh, you know, um, in this FDP, uh, we were asked to do a WordPress, use the WordPress yeah. to create the website. Right. So, uh, I am from the discipline of English language and literature. Yeah. So, while creating the website, uh, can I use a personal blog so that students can come and, you know, the, um, showcase their creative talent? Because right now, sir, you are talking about creating a very professional website where you will showcase the faculty profile and the yes. publication details. So, is it also, you know, allowed to create a yes, personal blog? Yes, madam. Actually, the, blog. Uh, yeah, blogs are very much important. So, nowadays, uh, it is uh, it's become uh, uh, one of the places where 
creative writing can be expressed uh, online because uh, as we see uh, reading in papers and magazine has gone down tremendously and the creating blogs mm. is that way very important. Uh, in, your, in your case, uh, if you want the students to contribute, it might be slightly uh, different because you need, your, you need to give permission for your students to come into your website and contribute. <coughs> So, which can also be done which requires little more uh, playing around, but easier thing is they submit it and you, you or any one student uploads the uh, article for all other students. So, this is a very important thing and once the uh, blog is created, it is very important that it is also shared uh, widely in the social network, otherwise it hardly gets read. So, uh, one of the few things uh, that you might want to follow is to have a nice introductory paragraph which is uh, a short paragraph which tells what is it about and then actually go on to the essay. So, as you know the attention time span nowadays has come down a lot and you do not get uh, people to read your blog unless it is interesting to begin with. So, these are some of the things that you could ask your uh, students to do when they write the blog and then. Um, you put it up on your uh, uh, website and also share it widely in your social media network. So, that is very important. So, in is the it possible also to create a journal, uh, you know, department uh, journal online for the students to come and contribute and maybe the peers also? You mean a journal in, in the sense of the online, an online. Uh, uh, in the discipline, in the discipline. See, to uh, that is literature. Yeah, so that that becomes little more tricky because it involves a, a lot of work in the sense that you uh, you have to submit and then somebody else reviews and then you send back. That becomes little more complicated. My suggestion is to follow a hybrid approach here to uh, mm -hmm. do the submission and evaluation because it is going to be a small journal within your institute, what you could do is to do a hybrid approach. You ask the students to submit uh, in some uh, Moodle kind of website where somebody else can peer review it. Okay? And once it is peer reviewed within the Moodle website and within Moodle you can easily do the peer review. So, once you do the peer review and then the students improve it. The final, the so called accepted version can be put on a public website. So, you can carry out the uh, selection process in an internal website or through pen and paper because it is a small community and then the selected ones you can put it as a journal or a magazine volume in your uh, um, blog site. So, it will be like a blog site with a series of articles published every month or a fortnight, but which has come through a process which can be a mixture of online and offline. You could do that pen and paper, ask people to share it and then evaluate it and then take the final thing online. Because setting up an entire system, particularly if you do not have a good IT support is little uh, difficult. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Savita College. Sir, uh, my question is, you, have ta you talked about uh, many uh, technical things like uh, creating a table and a user profile and all. My question is uh, about memory. Um, up to uh, which uh, memory size we can add information, sir? This is the first question, sir. So, it depends memory on… Memory point of view. Yeah. So, it depends on yes. where you are going to host the website. So, Within wordpress.com, they give you a certain, I think, 5 gigabytes which is free. Uh, you might have to check that. I, I do not know the current status, what it is. But if you are hosting it within your own institute, uh, within your own institute, then uh, it is up to how much memory that you can buy. Okay? If it is a server that you are hosting yourself, it is not very uh, difficult, you can take how much ever memory you want, but usually 5 gigabytes for a personal website is more than sufficient. 
Okay, sir. Then my second question is, it's about live chatting. Suppose uh, the students and uh, staff interaction is there. Suppose uh, the student wants um, clarify one doubt from the faculty. How the live chat can be implemented in WordPress, sir? Live chat, um, like Skype and all. Yeah. So um, usually, uh, any of these uh, WordPress, Drupal, or other things allow you what is known as plugins, uh, plugins okay. or add-on modules. So what you need to do is you need to search for uh, plugins for online chat, okay, textual chat mm -hmm. or a, a video chat. Video chat might be little uh, difficult, but textual chat are uh, quite easy. So you might be able to install this additional plugins by which you can okay, allow sir. Thank you, sir. A chat. Thank My you third much. question is, sir, uh, sir, actually, uh, is there any book for website maintenance? Because we need a lot of things to maintain in websites, uh, like uh, management, uh, I mean, uh, the database, then the extra facility, security and all. Is there any uh, specified book for website management? I do not think there is any one specific book um, because the technologies keep changing so much, but one of the places where you could look is O'Reilly. O'Reilly has got a lot of such books in, in general and uh, this, there is another called website for dummies. But usually it is very difficult by just using the book and following. It is uh, you need some amount of training and uh, playing around with it. Because we do not have any formal course within India where people teach about various apps, aspects of website management including as you rightly pointed out database, uh, security and uh, backup and all those things. So it, it becomes a uh, little tricky that people usually learn on the job. There is no one specific sir, book I can recommend. So my last question is about uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, suppose uh, I, if I if I want to help farmers, in what way this website management will help, sir? Yeah. So even in this case, what? I got you have, my question, sir. Yeah, I got your question. Sir. So. So actually, I want to I want to help farmers uh, because you have uh, uh, instructed many uh, points about website management and website creation and all. So I want to help farmers for their daily activities. Like uh, fixing the price of vegetables and carbs, and in what way uh, this website management uh, will give you positive effect to the farmers? Yeah. So I got the question. So the what you have to do is the process is the same. Now today we said, uh, as a faculty, we looked at the audience. Now you have to ask who is the audience of the farmer and what kind of information they are going to seek. So process is exactly same. You just need to gather first design who is the user of the farmers, the kind of information that they want to provide, who are the users and then okay. gather the information and make a website. So process is exactly the same. Okay. Okay. Thank so you, you sir. So you identify Thank the you, users, collect the information and then create a website and then you are done. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the uh, time you have taken today morning. Goodbye.